welcome to Life Room Court, the show where we break down your favorite made-for-TV movies one bottle at a time. I'm your host, Patrick Serrano, and today we are talking about Daddy's Perfect Little Girl. Daddy's Perfect Little Girl stars Addie Crackton, Matt Wells, Heather Mitchell, and Sophie Gendron. On the show, we either pour it up, which means yes, or put a cork in it, which means no thank you. So, what are we going to do to this movie? Pour a cork in it. We're doing a little bit of both. If you haven't seen the movie and you want to avoid spoilers, you're going to want to go ahead and hit pause and come on back because I'm going to do a quick little recap starting now. Ella and her hunk father, Nolan, ride bikes together. A speeding car drives by, knocking Nolan off his bike. Ella beats the crap out of the driver. And that's how Daddy's Perfect Little Girl starts. A nosy neighbor named Albert yells at Nolan about his parenting skills. Ella is defensive, and I'm pretty sure Albert's gonna die. Ella doesn't like her father's attention being on anyone but her, and will go to any lengths to get it like cutting her finger and blaming it on the housekeeper, Larissa. Nolan works for a talent agency with a woman named Gabriella. They book an actress named Juliette Lee from a popular TV show called Twisted Pretty. Ella is a huge fan because the character played by Juliette has also lost her mother. Ella brags to her friend Kinsley about a chance to meet the actress and a trip to adventure camp. Kinsley is unimpressed and a legend and an icon. You go, Kinsley. You're so lucky. Ever since my parents got divorced, my dad never takes me anywhere. But your dad works all the time, so you don't really have it much better than I do. She gets angry when she notices her father flirting with a set designer named Cecily. On set, Ella is awkward with Juliet. To add insult to injury, Juliet pays attention to Xander, who is Cecily's son over Ella. Ella creates another accident for attention. Kinsley mocks Ella for not getting a selfie. Where's your friend Juliet? Let me see your picture with her. I... I didn't get one. I knew it. So, Ella angrily stomps on some flowers. Then she talks to Juliet's social media grid, revealing a lot of exposition about her mother being killed in front of her by an abusive boyfriend. Ooh, yikes. When Nolan and Gabriella get assigned to a big work project, Nolan is forced to cancel the trip to adventure camp. Ella asks Juliet's social media profile what to do and lands on killing Gabriella's sick mother. Totally normal behavior there. Ella snoops around and asks questions. Then she rides her bike to Gabriella's mother's house and plans to put Tide Pods in her yogurt. Tide Pods, are you kidding me? After coming up short at home, Ella rides to the store to steal a few Tide Pods. She is caught by Albert, who threatens to tell. Ella isn't having any of that and pushes him off of a ladder, killing him dead. Ella is successful at putting the Tide Pods in the yogurt, but the plan backfires because Gabrielle takes time off from work to take care of her mother, leaving Nolan saddled with more work. Nolan blows off work when Cecily procures some adventure camp tickets. Ella is angry that Cecily and Xander will be coming along too and tries to suffocate Xander with a pillow. When that doesn't work, she makes an elaborate plan to kill him on a biking trail. Xander doesn't die and ends up in the hospital, and Cecily starts to have doubts about Ella. She talks to the housekeeper and to Kinsley, and Kinsley calls Ella to tip her off about the snooping Cecily. And what you did to your neighbor? What? That's not true. You don't know anything. Whatever, Ella, just like you said, we're not friends anymore. <gasps> Ella has a panic attack and grabs a knife in an attempt to kill Cecily, but she stabs her dad instead. She cries hysterically and asks Juliet's Instagram for help. Juliet, you have to tell me what to do. My dad is hurt. Please answer me. Juliet. Ella, come back to me, honey. Then, she says the titular line of the movie. Am I still your perfect little girl, daddy? Ella is locked in a padded cell while Cecily and Nolan continue to date. And that is Daddy's Perfect Little Girl. So, Daddy's Perfect Little Girl. I wore tie-dye today 
to bring out my inner child, my little nine-year-old who loved to tie-dye. In some aspects, this movie is so great. But also, I realized as a film major in college, maybe it was a film minor, as a film minor in college, I would say this movie is poorly executed. So good, it's bad, you could say. The long line of the classic bad child movies. You had the Bad Seed remake with Rob Lowe. You had Mommy's Little Angel, where the girl pushes the guy off the parking garage. Or Mommy's Little Princess, the girl legit thinks she is a princess. All of them are fun and have a place at Lifetime. Daddy's Little Girl, on the other hand, the title is just cringeworthy right off the top. She's obsessed with her dad. The whole movie, she's fighting bitches for her dad. She's making sure no one gets close to her dad, which was hilarious. The movie's just over the top in the best way. So this is where it turns into the so good it's bad, right? Ella going to get the Tide Pods to poison the woman, which just made no sense. Thank God we had Tide Pods finally in a Lifetime movie. Like, why haven't we had Tide Pods as a killing weapon before? Hattie Crackton did a great job portraying this little child. I loved her little breakout moment where she was freaking out at the end and talking to the screen. Oh, it was so sad. But then you had her going into a mental institution, which I didn't really like for a child to be going to a mental institution and just being swept away under the rug. See you later, kid. Good luck to you. So that would be a reason why I would cork it as well. Like, let's get the kid some therapy and uh, maybe she could like be at home with her dad. She is a child after all. I mean, she did murder a bunch of people, but you know, she's a kid. She didn't mean to. And now it is time for the Minority Report, the segment where we talk about representation in TV movies and why it matters. Some really fun representation here. Characters in the main storyline that were actors of color. We had some Black actors as well as some Latinx actors. Hattie, played by Anthony Stevenson. Let's talk about Hattie for a minute. I love that she was such a wise child. She was speaking like an adult having that attitude that I just love because it's like my attitude uh, and like a really well-written character where she is friends with Ella, but not really, not really a little shady friend. Cecily played by Tracy Shreve was really fun. Love that she was the love interest here for our main man. Yeah. She was a working mother. Loved that. Love that she had a, set designer job on set because a lot of set designers are not women of color so that was really cool to see as well and xander played by joshua bra so yeah the director curtis crawford has been a long time lifetime director love that he is making some choices to diversify his casting definitely can see the work being put in to making sure that Everybody is represented in a Lifetime movie, including gay Ecuadorians. So <laughs> cast me, Curtis, if you're looking for <laughs> looking for a gay secretary in a movie. I'm your guy. And I think that wraps it up for this episode. If you want more Lifetime Uncorked, you can check out our website, lifetimeuncorked.com, or follow me at Patrick Miguel or the show at Lifetime Uncorked. Don't forget, we have a podcast also called Lifetime Uncorked check out our back catalog we are currently on hiatus don't forget to like comment and subscribe to this channel tell your friends all about it and if you're so inclined donate to our ko-fi page you can give a three dollar donation and that would be so awesome because that helps me keep this thing going i think that's it for this week see you next week bye